Good morning, fourth graders. It's Miss Flores with math. Um, so make sure you have all the things you need for math today. You're going to need a math paper. You're also going to need your lesson activity um, number 26. So we're going to use that today in your math book. So make sure you have a pencil and an eraser and also a ruler. All right. And I just wanted to point out the little notes that I've gotten from you guys this last few weeks. Thank you guys so much um, for all the love and support. I am really excited that we still get to have school together, um, even if it's online. Um, Mrs. Murden and I love you guys and we're excited for what's ahead for you. And we just hope that you're enjoying your time with your family and that you guys are um, trusting in God and everything that he says he's going to do, he will do. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We just thank you for these students as they're getting ready to learn, God, that you would just sharpen their minds, Lord, that they would be open to receive all that you have for them, and that they would be able to focus and to grow more in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Be tying into investigation seven. So if you want to go back to that and take a pause and, and go back and look at that so you can remind yourself what that was. Um, but we're just going to work through all 10 problems. And um, let's just get right down to it. So you're seeing my math paper right here. So on the top, um, we're just going to write investigation nine. I and V for an abbreviation for investigation. Okay, um, the date is going to be for 14. I always have to look at my calendar. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed your Easter Monday yesterday. And then make sure that your name is on the top right single one of them. All right, so we're going to talk about analyzing relationships. So in this investigation, what you'll be able to do by the end of this, hopefully, is you're going to be able to plot on a quadrant, which is going to be this square right here, okay, on a coordinate plane. Um, so you're going to be able to plot and you're also going to be able to graph equations, okay? We talked about making equations for you to graph and making um, those plot points, but you're actually going to do that and then be able to graph it. And then you're going to use um, your coordinate plane to determine the length of each segment, okay? So we're going to we're going to do a few different things. We're going to plot we're going to graph and we're going to determine the length, okay? So the first thing we're gonna look at is going to be this picture on page 600. Um, it talks about how we learned in investigation seven, how we can find the length of a segment, okay? Um, so we see that this segment has three six for one point um, and it, the end of the segment goes to 10 six, okay? Just a reminder, okay, just a reminder, um, that when you're looking at your points, okay, um, your x-axis is always going to be, I'm just going to put this right here for you guys to see, your x-axis is always going to be the first number in your, in your coordinates, and your y-axis is always going to be the second number in your coordinates, okay? Um, so when we look at the first point of the segment, we have three six. That means three is on the x-axis. Okay, and we know the x-axis goes horizontal, okay, so left to right or right to left. Um, and then we have our y point um, for the first pair, which is 6, okay? We know that y-axis is going to go vertical, okay, so up and down. All right, so just pointing that out for you before we begin, okay? Um, so it gives you a segment. That segment is called PS, okay, PS, and that has points um, coordinate points of 3, 6, and 10, 6, okay? Um, and it's talking about how you can find the length of the segment. So remember, okay, remember when we're finding the lengths of the segment, you're going to subtract. I'm going to say that again. You're going to subtract, okay, whether the line is on the x-axis or on the y-axis, okay? You'll notice, okay, for each line, either your x your x um, coordinates are the same number or the y coordinates are the same number. So in this case, okay, in the example they give you, your plot coordinates are 3, 6 on one side, and the other side is 10, 6. Okay? So do you see how these two numbers are the exact same? Hopefully you're shaking your head or saying, yes. All right. Um, so that means that that is our Y plot. Okay. Our Y plot. And that is the same. So that means that our line 
is not going up and down, okay? It's going side to side, right? Because it's on the x-axis, meaning it's not going to move on the y. They're all going to be on the 6. That means when we go up to plot it, it's all going to be on the 6 axis, okay? The 6, 6 number on the y axis, okay? So now, because it already has the example for you, um, you can look at it, and that means that you're going to subtract. So you're going to subtract your x um, numbers because that's going to give us the length. So when we subtract, we just do 10 minus 3, and we get 7. So that means the distance of that first um, sample they give you up top is going to be 7 segments long or 7 units long. Okay. Um, and if you read your book, it says the same thing right there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start um, with numbers 1 through 10 because that is what you are asked to do today. I'm kind of looking for my eraser. I don't know what happened to it. Um, there it is. Behind my laptop. Okay, so <clears throat> you're going to, we're going to work on 1 through 7. Okay, or sorry, 1 through 10. Now, at times, we're going to use our lesson activity 26, but for now, we're going to write all of our answers on our math paper. All right, let's begin. Number one, it says, what is the length of segment TR? Okay, now look at the picture. We see that TR is going horizontally or vertically. That's right, if you guessed it, or if you're looking at the video right now, it is going vertically, right? It's going up and down, okay? So the points that they give us, and I'm going to write these out for T and R. I'm going to write the coordinates out on our paper for number one. Okay, the first coordinate they give us is 2, 10. That's the first coordinate they give us. The second coordinate, okay, they give us is 2, 1. So we know that the x points are going to be the same because it's not really running from left to right, okay? It's going from up and down. So we're not going to subtract anything from the x. We're not going to subtract anything from the first number because they're the same. So that means they're on the same line. Okay. But what we are going to subtract are our y axis because that's the way our line is running up and down. Okay. So now we're going to subtract 10 minus 1. And I know that this is so difficult and challenging for you guys, but you can do it. All right. 10 minus 1. And what is that? Nine. There is nine. So number one is going to say nine units. Okay. That means that we're not going to get a ruler and measure out the whole line. Um, we are going to subtract the plot coordinates. Okay. The numbers in order to get the amount of units that are in between the line. All right. In between the line. All right. We're going to move on to number two. Okay. Before it gives us number two, it talks about how we can graph coordinates. Um, based off of having an equation. Okay, so graphing an equation. Now you might think, well, this is like really confusing, Miss Flores. And I know sometimes it is confusing. So let's look at the equation they give us. Okay, um, they give us y. They give us y equals 2x plus one. Okay. So this is an equation that you have done in the past. Okay. Remember when we set up our table, okay, you might remember doing this from your homework. Okay. We have an X column and a Y column. And then what you would do is you would plug in a random number for X and that's what you would get for Y. Okay. Um, so this is our equation and these are going to be our coordinates. That we're going to plot okay um so if you are a little confused on that you can go back to investigation seven and reread that um, but if you are right there with me let's just keep on going okay um so we know that when we have this um equation and i'll put and you can look at the picture right here it says that our that the line okay is gonna pass through the y-axis at one so if you look right up there at that little picture, okay, and you see the line, is it passing the one on the y-axis, meaning on the vertical line, okay, is there a line going through the one, okay? So if you find one and you see that the, the blue line that's going through, you'll see that the blue line is going to hit the one, okay, because that means that it's going to be on 
the one. Okay. Um, it says there's a question for number two. It says, where will the line y equals 2x plus 3 cross the y-axis? Um, so if we see that we have y equals 2x plus 1, and that does cross the 1 on the y-axis, okay? And if we have y equals 2x plus 2, and it crosses the 3, or sorry, the 2-axis, then don't you think that y equals 2x plus 3 is going to cross the 3 on the y-axis? And the answer is most definitely yes, it will cross the y, all right? So your answer for number 2 is going to be 3. That means that when you're plotting your lines, okay, that it will eventually hit those numbers on the y-axis. All right, number three, write a set of ordered pairs for y equals 2x plus 3, okay? So now that we have our equation, okay, y equals 2x plus 3, so I'm going to erase this right here. So our equation is y equals 2x plus plus three. And it wants you to have ordered pairs, meaning it wants you to be able to fill out this chart right here. Okay. Now you are thinking, how am I going to fill out this chart? Okay. Um, you need to plug in a number for X. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to plug in. We're just going to start with one. Okay. We're going to start with one. So what happens when we plug in one for X? Okay. So I'm going to put my 1 there, okay, and I'm going to do the first equation. y equals 2 times 1 plus 3. Now, we know that because of order of operations, we need to do the multiplication first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply 2 times 1, okay? So we all know that 2 times 1 is what class? 2. And now we're going to add 3 to that, okay? So we bring down our equation again, and we have 3 plus 2, which is 5. So if x equals 1, then y equals 5. How about we try number 2? Okay, let's plug in 2 for x. So let's set it up again. y equals 2 times 2 plus 3. Okay, so 2 times 2 is what class? Four, and then you add three, okay? And four plus three is seven. So if X equals two, then Y will equal seven. Let's do three. Okay, we're gonna plug in three. So Y equals two times three plus three. Okay, y equals 2 times 3 plus 3. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 3 is 9. So if x equals 3, then y equals 9. Number 3 question says, write a set of coordinate pairs for y equals 2x plus Three. We're going to use this information from here. Now, if you did your work in here, that's totally fine. If you did it on a scratch piece of paper, that's also fine. Um, but our set of coordinate pairs would look like this. One, five, and it only asks for one, but I'm going to give you all three. One, five, two, seven, and three, nine. Okay, these are called our coordinate pairs. Okay. That's how we got our coordinate pairs from using this equation right here. Then the next thing it says to do is to graph the line and check your prediction in problem two. That means that we're going to have to see if it does in fact go on the y3 axis. Because we said right here that it would go on the y axis on the three. And you guys are probably still like, what is going on? And we're just going to do this together step by step. So now we're going to plot these coordinates, okay? So go ahead and get out your lesson activity 26, okay? It looks like this coordinate plane. Okay, so now we're going to take our coordinate pairs that we just figured out, okay? So the first pairs that we did, oh, that kind of works, 
we have one and five. Okay, we have one and five. So we're going to plot one and five. So that means we go on our x-axis first. We go over one and we go up five. One, two, three, four, five. It's numbered for you. Okay, so that's our first, our first coordinate, right? Our first ordered pair. Then we do two, seven. We go over two, one, two, and we go up seven. Okay. The next thing we next one we do, we go over three on the x-axis and we go up nine. Okay. So now, now with only doing those three numbers, is our line that we make going to hit number three? Because remember, this is what we predicted, that it would go all the way to this hard angle. So you're going to get your ruler. You're going to get your ruler right here. And you're going to draw a line. Okay. Once you draw that line, you can see, okay, you can see that it does go through y and three okay it does go through three on the y axis because we're on the y axis and it goes to through the three so that means that this equation y equals 2x plus three okay that equation that we just used and we just did right here okay this tells us that it is going to hit the three on the y axis Okay, so that means we predicted it. We said it would probably go on the three. Okay, did it go on the two or the one? No, because it wasn't plus one and it wasn't plus two. It was plus three. So that's why it misses the two and the one completely. Let's go down to number four. So it says we have already studied how to make ordered pairs for a horizontal line. Okay, that means we're going up and down. Okay. Um, such as y equals 5. Another type of line we can make ordered pairs for is a vertical line, okay? Vertical line. Um, and this is, sorry, horizontal is left to right. Vertical is up and down, and this is x equals 5, okay? So when we see, okay, when we see that all the x's equal a certain number, that means that it is going to be vertical, okay? Because that means you're going to go up a different numbers and you're only not going to go over only one number okay if you see that y is all one number then that means it's going to be horizontal okay so let's look at this right here okay you can see that there's a line that goes all the way down from <clears throat> the top to the bottom landing on number five okay on the x-axis and it goes all the way top. And then you see to the right of that, okay, there's a table that says X. And you see how all the X's are fives, and then the Y is one, two, three. Okay, so basically what they, what they show you there is how to plot those coordinates, okay? How to plot those coordinates. So let's look at number four. Number four says write the coordinates of another point that would be on this line. Okay, so back to our math paper, okay? We see that we have five and one, okay? I'm just gonna draw the table here for you so you know what I'm talking about, okay? So we have X and we have Y. All of the X's are fives, five, 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 okay? Um, it has one, two, three. What do you think this is going to be just by looking at this pattern? We can easily write four, okay? Because that means we're just doing a straight line. So when it's asking for a pair that is probably going to be on this line, we can probably say that it's going to be five, four. It's also probably going to be what? Five, five. It's probably also going to be five, six. It's probably gonna be five, seven, five, eight, five, nine, five, ten, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, so basically you're just talking about the other points on the line that the line goes through, all right? Number five, it says, do the coordinates six, three represent a point on this line? Why or why not? So let's go back to this. Okay. Um, and it has five. And I'm going to plot what they have. They have five, one. They have five, two, five, three, five, four. And we're just going to go all the way up. Okay. I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to draw my line. So as you can see, it's going straight down the y-axis, okay? This is the y-axis. So the question 
that it's asking you for number five, saying, will six, three be able to be on this line? So let's plot six, three. Okay, where does six, three go? That means we need to go over six and we need to go up three. One, two, three. Okay, is this plot, is this dot on this line? I hope that you are saying no. Uh, because it's not on that line. It is actually next to the line. So the answer is, will this coordinate be represented on this line? Will this coordinate be on this line right here? And the answer is, in fact, no. No, 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 it will not. Why can 6-3 not be on this line? because of the x axis okay the x axis is six and not five okay so i'm gonna write that right here x axis is six and not five number six it says draw the graph of x equals seven name the coordinates of three points in the line Okay, so that means that we need to have three sets of coordinates. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the coordinates, okay? So let's draw our table right here in our math homework. Okay, we have X and we have Y, okay? We have seven for X. That's all it gives us for seven. So that means that every number we give for seven is going, or sorry, for X is going to be seven. All right, so where can we start plotting for y? What number does y start with? It starts with zero. And we can go one, and we can go two, and we can go three, and we can go four, and we can go five, and we can go six, and we can do any number for y because x is always going to be seven, okay? Um, so if we're going to write it as an ordered pair, that means we need to put it in the parentheses, okay, in the correct format. So we could do 7, 0, 7, 1, and 7, 2. It's only asking you for 3. All right, so that's the first part of number 6. And then it says to draw, okay, draw the graph. So that means that you're going to use your coordinate plane again to graph these plots okay so we have seven zero so that means we go over to seven and we put a dot in the zero that means we go over seven and we do go up one you go over seven and you go up two you go over seven and you go up three seven four go over seven and go up four seven five go over seven and go up Five. Okay, do you see how to do that? Okay. Then you would draw your line through. We're just going to put in arrows. Okay, the arrows tell us that the line can go on forever. Okay, it can go on forever, but we're only going to do a few, a few points. Okay, so this would be number six. All right, we're going to move on. Okay, so it says we've been writing equations to show the relationship of two quantities. Graphs can also be used to display relationships of two quantities. So number seven is also going to look at this table that it gives us, okay? And what can we tell just by looking at the table? Okay, what can we tell just by looking at the table? Um, what type of information or patterns do we see? I'm going to give you a few seconds to look at it. What patterns do you see in this table? All right, so when you're looking at this table, okay, um, the number of cups, okay, you see the number of cups, we have two and we have four, okay, is twice the number of pints. So that means that every pint is going to be multiplied by two. So we have one pint, and that means we have two cups, because one times two is two. So if we have two pints, then we multiply it by two, and we get four cups, because two times two is four. So... If we fill out this chart, I'm just going to draw the chart right here. It doesn't have to be big, okay? We have pints and we have cups. So I'm just going to do P and C, okay? It gives us the 1 and the 2. It gives us the 2 and the 4. It also gives us 3, 4, and 5, 
Okay, so now we have to multiply three times two in order to get the cups. So three times two is what class? Six. Now we have to multiply four times two. Four times two is what class? Eight. And then we multiply five times two. Five times two is what? 10. All right, so now we fill it, finished our chart, okay? And it says write a formula that can be used for changing pints to cups, okay? So now we need to write a formula. If we know that the pint needs to be multiplied by two, then that equals the cup. You get what I'm saying? The pint needs to be multiplied by two, and that equals a cup. So we're going to write it exactly how I just said it. So we have pint, we're just going to use P because it doesn't matter what number we put up there, needs to be multiplied by 2. Okay, we always put the number in front of the integer. Okay, we never put the letter first. We always put the letter second. Okay, so 2P, okay, that means 2 times pint, it doesn't matter how many pints, is going to equal cups. This is an equation right here. So number seven, your answer is 2P equals C, okay? Because they're asking you for an equation, okay? All right, let's look at number eight. It says use lesson activity 26 to graph this equation. This is our equation right here, okay? Um, so that means that we can plot all of these right here. The x-axis is going to be our pint, okay? So this is going to be our x-axis, and our y-axis is going to be cups, okay? So that means we need to plot, okay? So if we have our chart, if it's easier for you to set it up this way, you can totally set it up this way, okay? We have one for x and two for y. We have two for x and four for y, three for x and six for y, and four for x and eight for y, five for x and 10 for y, okay? So now we have our pairs, okay? We have one, two, two, four, three, six, four, eight, okay? Um, so now that we have that, we're going to plot it right here. So the first pair that we have is going to be one, two. So we need to go over one and go up two. One, two. Okay, I'll do all the coordinates right here so you can see. We have to do one, two, two, four, three, six, four, eight, and five, ten. Okay, so those are the ones we have to plot. So one, two is here. So then two, four, we go over one, two, and go up four. Three, six, one, two, three, and go up six. Four, eight, one, two, three, four, and go all the way up to eight. Five, ten, one, two, three, four, five, and go all the way up to 10. All right, then you're gonna get your ruler. and you're gonna draw your line with your arrows. And that is how you graph these coordinates. All right, number nine, it says, how is the graph you made similar to y equals two x? Okay, how is the graph similar to y equals two x? It's similar because whatever the y is, okay, whatever the y is going to be two times that, um, so we'll see if that works out. Y equals 2X, okay? Y equals 2X. So how do we figure that out? We have to plug it in into our chart right here, okay? So if we have Y equals 2X, okay, let's plug in um, any number for X. Okay, let's say X is 1 and we times it by two, and we get y. Okay, let's plug in two and multiply it by two, and we get y. Let's plug in three, multiply it by two, and we get y, six. Okay, do you see how these are the exact same thing? Yes, okay, um, because p, remember, 
is our x-axis, so 2 times x equals y. So yes, they are the same. All right, and last question, number 10, name a relationship of two measures. Okay, that can be graphed using an equation similar to y equals 2x, okay? So that means that you're saying what other measurements um, are doubled, okay? Um, so 2x equals y. So that means that we have quartz to pints, okay? Um, so that means that our quartz um, times 2 are going to be pints, okay? You can do yards to feet. We know that it's 36 feet. To one yard okay um, which means that we're going to have to do 12 times 3 okay so our equation can look like this y which is our yards equals 3 times feet because and we're just going to do x for feet. Because we know that there are 12 inches in a foot, so that's 36 inches are in a yard. I just probably said feet. I see that. I did say feet. I am so sorry. All right. So we know that there's 12 inches, um, or sorry, there's 12 inches in a foot, and there's 36 inches in one yard. So what you're going to have to do is you would have to multiply your feet times three in order to get whatever yard that you need. All right, class, um, this has been fun. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. If you have anything different for number 10, I'd love to hear it. Um, hopefully these pictures helped you a lot and we'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, bye.